Hey there, it's Hydes. I'm back with another video. I'm very excited. Going to be doing my first um, wrap up for the month. So we're going to be doing our March wrap up. Um, I was actually kind of surprised. So I have my notes right here because I got to stay organized. We'd be here forever if I didn't have some sort of notes guiding this conversation. Um, so I actually wound up finishing 11 books in March, but I also DNF'd three books. And I am terrible about DNFing books. Um, I'm one of those people that if I commit and I put the time in, I have a hard time being like, oh no, we're just gonna finish this, you know, 20% of the way through, 50% of the way through, what have you. Um, but I realized that I needed to stop doing that because I feel like I've wasted a lot of time that I could have been reading something I truly enjoyed as a, something that was like almost painful to experience. So this year I was like, we're gonna get better about DNFing things that you legitimately are just not getting into. So I wound up actually DNFing three books. Again, that's last year as a total, I DNFed two books. So the fact that it was three in one month is wild for me. And believe it or not, so we're a couple of days into April and I've already actually DNF'd a book in April too. So we're really, we're really on that this, um, we're really gonna be on our uh, DNFing in 2024. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and do this in basically four different sections to kind of stay semi-organized. So we're gonna talk about the books that we DNF'd, well, I DNF'd, uh, I want to be talking about my audiobooks that I listened to, which I actually wound up doing six audiobooks this month, which I felt like was a lot for me, but I wasn't mad at it. Um, I felt like, you know, certain months get a little bit busier, so I can't sit down and read a physical book as frequently, but I can run around and like do house chores, take the dogs on a walk, etc., cetera, et cetera, uh, listening to an audiobook. So it was a really like heavy audiobook month. And then I finished two on the Kindle and then three physical books. So that's how I'm going to do this again, just to kind of keep me organized. Otherwise I'm a squirrel and we're never going to get anything done. So we're going to go ahead and start with our lovely DNF list first. So the first one that I'm going to um, talk about was really good actually. And that is by Monica Hesse. I believe that's how you pronounce that. Um, I know that this is a fairly popular book. I mean, it's got like national bestseller and everything. So this book is about um, Maggie, who's the main character, and she is going through a divorce. And she's in a relationship for, I think, nine, ten years recently got married and now they're getting a divorce and you know she's obviously depressed upset and just it's going through her experience um and at one point I only got about 30 percent of the way through this book before I was like I just can't take it anymore <laughs> um there was a entire page pretty much I'll say an entire page of the of like she's like binge shopping which when you're depressed, that is a common thing that a lot of people do. And it's just an entire page of like a paragraph, not even like a list, an entire paragraph of all of the things that she purchased while binge shopping. I do not need an entire paragraph of all of the things that you purchased while binge like shopping. We, we could have, we could have done this in like a paragraph and gotten this, like the same point across in, in my opinion. Um, so I felt like the writing was really long winded. Um, I was struggling kind of to kind of see the point of the book. So again, we got about 30% of the way through that and it just wasn't for me. So I know that a lot of people liked it. I'm glad that you liked it. It just wasn't for me. So I wound up giving this a one star rating just because I personally could not get through it. Um, so the next book that I DNF'd, I was kind of somewhat surprised by but some not somewhat not surprised by like after thinking about it so I tried to go ahead and listen to hidden figures I don't know how well you can see that um which as probably a lot of people know is a movie 
I watched the movie before, obviously, you know, experiencing the book. And I think going into the book, so, I'm, so I've DNF'd this, but I'm planning at some point going back and retrying this one. So I have not actually, I'm not going to give this like a one star rating because I do plan on trying to pick this back up in the future. And I think my problem going into this is I was imagining the movie and like thinking that it was going to like be like how the movie was structured. And this book is structured almost like a scientific journal, which I don't mind. Like that's fine for me. I kind of like that sometimes. It's a little different in um, a story. And so I think it was more of like I was going in with like one thing and then like the actual book was a completely different thing. So I think that, that was like my mindset as opposed to the book itself. So that's why I'm going to try to go ahead and pick that back up um, in the future um, and give it another go just with the mindset like, hey, you're going in knowing this is definitely more of like a scientific journal as opposed to what the movie was. So just my own personal thoughts on that. Um, so DNF for now. So the third one that I DNF'd was one of my book of the month books. And that was The Fox Wife. And I was kind of under the impression that this was going to have some like feminist rage elements and that it was like the main character she's going and she's going to be like avenging her like family and like that's like elements of the story I got about 50% through this it was just too long-winded and very boring for me there were three points of view if I were yeah three points of view and I think that they, like they were all gonna be like interwoven by the end and I think that this was going to wind up being like a very long-winded semi love story with some drama could be wrong didn't finish the book it was one star for me it was just really boring I did not like it this is not my style of book if it's your style of book that's great I actually recommended this to one of my besties because this is definitely her style of book wasn't for me so my copy because I believe she has her own copy my copy is going to wind up in one of the little libraries that is um close by so it was a nice try it was a dnf for me one star so moving on to our next portion we're going to go into the audiobooks that I listened to and again I listened to six which was quite a lot um for a single month so the first one that I wound up listening to and finishing was The Bone Witch and I this is another one where so I wound up finishing it and so the, like the story is you're following T and she finds out that she is a witch uh, more specifically a bone witch there's different kinds of witches in like this world and a bone witch is I mean it's a necromancer you're like you wind up raising the dead um that's not really spoiling anything you find out that like kind of right off the bat and she winds up like going and being essentially an apprentice bone witch um you get two well you get two different points of view so like when you first start off the book it's a bard's point of view and he's it's like current time and he's talking to her from his point of view to get her story and then you do flashbacks to her point of view of her growing up and like how she became a bone witch and all of that the it was it this had I so I wound up rating this a two out of five star I feel that it had really interesting concepts but the execution was very boring personally I I just thought like you know like once she wound up getting to like her schooling it was just a lot of chapters of her schooling and not in like a fun kind of way where it's like interesting just more of like oh this is my school schedule like I'm like okay we've done nothing here and I feel like I believe that this is a trilogy I know that there's at least one more I think it's a trilogy 
and I'm it it just wasn't for me again like there was things about it that could have been interesting and in the next book maybe it could get interesting at this time I do not anticipate picking up the next one in the series but who knows down the road I might be interested enough so the bone witch was a two out of five for me personally um the next audiobook that I wound up listening to was not that bad oh, there we go kind of <laughs> sorry it's kind of a glare situation going on and this was edited by Roxanne Gay and this um it's called not that bad and it's dispatches from rape culture um this is know your own trigger warnings and where you are with being able to discuss like you know sexual assault and those kinds of topics because that's what this is it's a great book um one thing so it's like it's different stories um basically it's like a compilation of stories and it's different stories from like different people's past of their experience um with sexual assault and one thing I liked about it is that you got a very diverse set of like people telling their stories. Um, you get different age ranges, you have different like genders, you have different like sexual orientations, all of that. And then like the stories themselves range so much. Um, but it is a hard book. Know that going in don't go in thinking that it's not discussing difficult topics um i wound up rating that a 4.5 out of 5 so i thought it was excellently um it was done like so well like it was excellent um it was like all it was on the audiobook each story was read by its all like the author so at least i think it was the each of like the authors i'm assuming because you got like a different person per story it was excellent. I highly recommend it to anybody that wants to know more, get different perspectives, um, get more educated on like the topics. Um, but again, know that it is discussing very difficult triggering topics before you go into it, but highly recommend. I think everybody should wind up reading it in their life, personal opinion. So again, that was not that bad. Um, so the next book was I would say my surprise book. Um, so I read um, To All the Boys I've Loved Before and that's by um, Jenny Han. And this, this is a very YA book. Like, so the main character is a high schooler and she had, you know, a bunch of boys that at some point in her life that she loved. And to get over them essentially, she, wrote them letters but she never sent the letters well the letters wound up like being sent out uh there's a lot of like family drama in this um there's a lot of coping with loss there's um some talks about you know how she's now going to deal with this drama now all of these boys have these letters and i think that the intended audience is definitely like high schoolers, maybe like young 20s. I'm in my 30s. And I love this book. I wound up writing this a four out of five. It's a very easy to get through book. Um, I just thoroughly enjoyed the experience. I actually wound up downloading the audiobook for the second one. And I believe this is a trilogy. So I'll probably wind up finishing the trilogy like the way that the like the writing style is so good. I was just very, very surprised at how much I legitimately enjoyed this, considering the fact that I do not feel like I am the intended audience because of my age. Um, so I would say that if you have any concerns about it being like too young for you and you not being the intended audience, I thoroughly enjoy the experience. So take that for what it's worth. Again, I highly recommend. Um, so the next audiobook was When Women Were Dragons, and that is by um, Kelly Barnhill. So this was a really interesting um, 
read while listen. So you get two perspectives and one of them is like um, a scientist and it's kind of scientific journal-esque, but also like, like almost like when you like, like scientists like document on like recordings, like kind of like that. So it's giving like sci very scientific in how that the information is presented to you. And then the other um, perspective is um, the main character, the main female character, and you're like following her story. And the whole concept is like there were, are there, it's set starting in like the 50s. And the concept is like women go through a mass dragoning where they turn into dragons and like the government's trying to like basically cover up like that didn't happen that didn't happen like no no like and then it's like okay well, where did all these women go and it's you get to like see like our main character go through um that experience because she has a family member that winds up dragoning I don't I'm hoping that doesn't spoil anything I, I don't want to say who it is but she does have a fa like a family member that does wind up dragoning and just like her experience through that and watching people basically try to like essentially like cover up all of this and she's basically told like hey you have to lie and it is a slower book I will say so that's one thing to consider that if you are not into slower books, I think that if I was reading this, this could have potentially been a DNF, but I'm really glad that I finished it because the ending was really, really good. Like this is one of those books that like, I'm glad that I hung on until the end um, because the ending was just really good to me. I really just enjoyed it. Um, I did wind up rating this a three out of five as opposed to something higher only because I did think about DNFing it a few times but I think it's worth getting to the end it's a unique story I've never read anything quite like it before so again that was um when women were dragons uh the next uh audiobook that I listened to was Remarkably Bright Creatures now I knew when I say I knew absolutely nothing about this book I knew absolutely nothing going into this book I stumbled on this book on Goodreads um I saw that a couple of my like friends had read it and they rated it pretty high um and I just love the cover I think it's bright and I I just like I like it has an octopus in it and I I love octopus I know that's weird. It's one of, they're one of my favorite animals. And so it just like drew me in. So go, I went into this knowing absolutely nothing. And it was a remarkable story. Absolutely remarkable. Um, so you get three points of view. So you get Tova, who is like the main female character. And she is in her 70s, if I remember correctly. And she works at an aquarium. And so like you get some of her story where she's kind of going through some like grieving, some loss. She's had people in her life that she's lost. So you're going through that experience. And then you also have Cameron. I believe it's Cameron. He is a 30 year old and he's kind of described as almost like semi like wash up ish. Like he kind of like bounces from the job to job. Like he's not really got a career in place. Like He's got his like two best friends from high school are like married. They're having like a baby and he kind of feels like he's just kind of lost, lost in the sauce, if you will. And he feels like he doesn't have anything stable like other people around him have. And so we're going through and getting his perspective and his story. And then we have my personal favorite point of view and that's Marsalis. And he is the octopus. Yes, we get a perspective of an octopus and he is the best. He is so snarky. He is so witty. He is so funny. And I love him. Adore him. So good. So like you get these three different perspectives and they're all like the story basically like starts like intertwining and kind of like coming together and like all three of these like main characters are intertwined together and you get to see like how that story like 
unravels as you're like getting their like like their stories and how you're like you know like how like this character goes here and that character goes there and it's so good it's had a little sadness in it it's got funniness to it it's got hope in it I wound up rating this a um 4.5 out of 5 I almost rated it a five, but just there was something just missing for me. I, it, it takes a lot to get a five star out of me sometimes, but then sometimes I'm like, I'm giving that a five star and there's not really any good reason other than the fact that it was a vibe, but this one got a 4.5 out of five star. Um, cannot recommend it enough. Again, I went in knowing absolutely zero about this book and it was remarkable. I just highly recommend it please read it. It's so good. But again, that's Remarkably Bright Creatures. Um, so last but not least um, on our audiobooks for this past month was um, Rasp Raspidic. I think that's how you pronounce that. I'm really bad at pronunciation. Sorry, everybody. Um, so this... I kept seeing this kind of, you know, at Barnes and Noble and a couple of other things. Um, I really enjoyed this book. So you get your main character, um, Callie, and she is a siren. And it you get like present day perspective and then you also get flashback perspective. And she basically made deals with a character called the bargainer and so the bargainer like basically like after like I think seven years of like not being in her life just kind of appears out of nowhere one night and is basically like you know like she bargains so she like basically owes him favors and she owes him a lot of favors um, and he's like, hey, basically coming back and I am going to be cashing in those favors. Um, and so you get to see like their relationship in the past and like how they like how they had like come encounter with one another, how their relationship like, you know, progressed in again in the past. And then you get to see like what happened to where they had like a period of time not together um and then like you get like a nice really good ending as to like how like they're like back together and you know they wind up you know having feelings for one another I don't feel like that's really spoiling anything because that's you know how fantasy books go um but when he comes back he is asking her to so he's asking her to go to the fey land to help with a major issue that's going on in the fey land that he feels like he's she's only going to be like able to like help with because of her like siren abilities um so i don't want to give too much away because then it'll spoil it but i thoroughly enjoyed it um there is some spice in it it's not until like later into the book i wouldn't say that this is like overly spicy or like i would say like maybe like a, like a, on a scale of like one to five, maybe like a three to 3.5 to where it's like, you get a little descriptive, you get a few scenes, but it's not like too much. So I really enjoyed it. I love their character develop, like their character dynamic so much. Highly recommend. Um, I actually wound up downloading the second one and I wound up rating that a four out of five star. Just really good. I, I don't know, like, I don't know if maybe people were talking about this, like, back in the day, if you will, and people just stopped talking about it, but highly recommend um, for anybody that likes any kind of, like, fantasy books. Okay, so we're moving on to our, the books that we read on Kindle. So the first one that we have, give me one second, I gotta load the little page up here. Of course, it's being a, a pain when I need it to hurry up. Okay, 
So we have Slewfoot by Brahm. Um, so this is my second horror book that I've read this year. And I'm not a horror fan. I'm a weenie. I do not like horror. It's not my thing. And I don't think that I know what horror books are because this is my second one. And I've thoroughly enjoyed, actually I've read now three. I'll have one for next month that I'll talk about. But I've now read three. This is my second one, like I just said. Um, I really am enjoying the genre. So if you're a weenie like me, maybe try a horror. You might actually like it more than you think. But so Slufa is set back in um, the times of the Salem witch trials. So you know that there was like, women were being prosecuted for existing essentially. And you know, really like, you know, religion, like mostly Protestants, um, some Catholicism, like Catholics and Protestants were like the two biggest religions were like, you know, basically being like, oh, like that person's a witch, that person's a witch, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so basically what's happening in this story is um, our main character, she is young, when she basically like her father i don't i don't want want to don't want to say like sold her but like shipped her from the U like from like the uk to the united states to be married off essentially and so like you get to see her come over here it's a very different like world for her it's a culture shock because like it's just like the dynamics between like religion and everything that's going on in like the uk at that time and like the United States at that time was just so drastically different. And, you know, she wasn't a, I want to just sit here and let my husband yell at me, anything along those lines. Like, she's, you know, she mouthy. She's sassy. And we love it. So, like, she really struggles to blend in, basically, in, like, you know, be okay with being, like, an obedient wife. And her husband that she winds up marrying is actually very okay with that like you know like he tries to keep her like hey be quiet like we're in public um but like when they're by themselves like he's he seems pretty like okay with the fact that she's a little more on the outspoken side and that she you know has her own voice and has her own opinion so he winds up um dying early on in the book and so he like she winds up inheriting their farm that they have together and she basically has to like fight for their farm. And she winds up meeting Slewfoot, who is a demon, forest spirit, whatever you want to refer to him as. And like this is her going through like her like struggles and trying to be, you know, an outspoken woman. And then, you know, like there's the whole witchcraft, you know, aspect of it. It's really good. It's giving feminist rage, which I'm always a big fan of personally. Um, I really enjoyed it. I don't think it's overly graphic at any points. Like there's like a couple of scenes that are semi-graphic and I understand why it's horror, but it never bothered me. And again, I'm a weenie. As I will always say, I don't like horror. I really enjoyed this and I'm really glad that I'm getting into horror. Um, because I feel like it's a genre that I was always like nervous to get into. And I'm glad that I'm like breaking out into new genres this year. So I wound up rating Slewfoot a 3.5 out of 5. So I would say pretty good in my opinion. Um, so highly recommend that. So we have moving on to our next one um, that I read on the Kindle. And that was... Howl's Moving Castle and a lot of people probably know this more from um, the movie which was done by Studio um, Ghibli. Beautiful movie. Absolutely love that. Um, I really enjoyed this. This is a chill like this is like you know a child like a children's book so go and knowing that it is a children's book. Um, I enjoyed it. It's an easy read. It's a quick read. Most people could probably finish it like in a f handful of hours in my opinion. Like I'm a slow reader and I think that it's a pretty quick read. Um, one thing I will say is that the if you've seen the movie 
the movie plot and the book plot they don't like they're not like this exact same so go in knowing that like the story is not like one for one um I enjoyed it I liked the character dynamics I liked like meeting the characters again um and it's just like it's it's got whimsy and it's just it's an easy read it's you know it's giving fairy tale and it's cozy so like if you like those kinds of books this is great I will say as somebody that saw the movie first I prefer the movie and that's only because like I think it's because I saw it first I liked the story in the movie better that's just me again that's because maybe I saw it first maybe not maybe you might read it and say hey I like this version of the story better that's great um I wound up rating this a three out of five again it was a good book I enjoyed it quick read um so highly recommend if you're looking for um something that's a little on the cozier side and just enjoyable and easy to read so that was the last of my Kindle books. So we're moving on to our last three books and these are gonna be my physical books. So the first one that I read was another one of my book of the month books and that was Hello Stranger. And I love a good rom-com romance book. I don't know if this is technically rom-com. Could, maybe, we'll call it rom-com. Um, but I love a romance book. I read a lot of fantasy so like when I'm reading like I feel like fantasy is like a little heavier usually longer so I like to read like a nice like romance between those um I really enjoyed this so like the concept of this is we have our main character and I'm terrible at like about their names like I read so many books Sadie and she is a portrait artist and she wound up just becoming a finalist in a like a portrait competition and so she's very exciting because like you know she's an artist being an artist is hard it's it's like it's hard to like get you know somewhere being an artist so she's like this might be my big break I'm really excited about it um but at the beginning of the book she winds up having um she has like I think it's a brain disorder of some kind like she is like she's got something in her brain that uh basically like triggered and so she like wound up like passing out in like the street basically um she has to go in for an operation and this this is not really ruining anything again like this is like the first like two three chapters um so she goes in for this procedure again it's a brain surgery so it's pretty serious and when she gets out of the procedure and she's going through, you know, like all of her rehab, she realizes that she is face blind. And so basically, like when she looks at people, like people's faces are like distorted. And as a portrait artist who just got into a major like competition, that is a problem if you can't paint portraits because you can't paint faces so it's just going through like that struggle and like having a major major health crisis in your life and then now because you have this health crisis like some vital part of you has changed so it's got like serious like you know topics and then like there's a romance like aspect of it and it's done in such a in my opinion unique way and I've never read anything like it before and I really recommend it um I really enjoyed this um I wound up giving this a four out of five so highly recommend if you like romance and you want something a little off the beaten path of like I would say like a traditional romance so highly recommend our next one is one of our book of the year we got lessons in chemistry this book was excellent just so good I wound up giving this a five out of five star this is my only five star read from this past month um and we have um Elizabeth is our main character and this is set in the 50s and 60s and she is a chemist when women obviously weren't really 
recognized as like serious people in STEM. Um, and it's just kind of going through some of her struggles as being a woman in STEM, not being taken seriously. Um, and I just love her character because like she never changes who she is for anyone, whether or not that's good or bad, because sometimes that has consequences. Um, and she's just a really strong character. She's just unique. And you know, like she just she's unapologetically herself. So I really liked this. Um, I will say a little trigger warning, there is conversations about some um, sexual harassment. Unfortunately, it was back in the 50s and 60s, not that uncommon. So just know going into this, like that is a trigger warning that you need to keep in mind. Um, so highly recommend again, five out of five star. So good. I love a book about women in STEM. So like that's already a win for me. So our ne last but not least of books from last month is a Magic Steep and Poison. One, look at this cover. Like, look how pretty that is. Like, it's just like, even the back, like you got the side, the back. I just, I think it's beautiful. I love, I love a beautiful cover. I just, I love it. Like, give, like, I will buy a book. I probably maybe definitely bought this book solely off of the cover. I have, this is a duology. I have the second one in the duology as well. Don't care. It's fine. Um, so this drew my attention. So I did read a little bit about it before I purchased it. Um, I really like the concept of this book because the magic system, magic is utilized through brewing tea, which was so fascinating to me because I personally have not come across any kind of magic system like that before. So I was like, oh, I'm in. Like, that's unique. It's interesting. I like it. And so we have our main character and, and her name is Ning, but she's going by her sister's name, Sue. Um, her mom was a, like basically master at the tea brewing. I'm trying to remember what they were called. Again, I'm just terrible about this stuff. Oh, one thing about this book is there is a glossary. We love a glossary. It's fantastic. Um, so the masters are Shin Young Shi's and then there's Shin Young Tu's. I think I pronounced that correctly. Um, and so her sister was her mom's apprentice and she was kind of being an apprentice to her dad who was, um, who's a physician. Uh, there is somebody going around poisoning people in the, like in their world and her sister, um, her, you find out again, this is like chapter one. So I'm not really, I hope I'm not spoiling anything because it's chapter one. Her mom winds up like, like dying and being really sick and obviously wind up dying. And her sister is really sick. And so there is this competition where like any of the apprentices could go and compete and become like the master for the empire. Um, and so she goes in her sister's stead to try to like win this competition so that she could get favor and hopefully find a cure for her sister. So that's like the whole concept of this. This is a very YA book, which is fine. I, I don't have a problem with YA books. It was a little too YA for my taste though. Um, I rated this personally a 2.5 out of five. I think other people would enjoy this more than me only because I read like high fantasy a lot. So I think that if you are younger or if you're just getting into fantasy, this is a really great option for you because it's pretty easy to follow. There's not anything too crazy going on. It's not like super, super long because some fantasy books are really, really like bulky. So I think if you're just getting into fantasy or really like younger, like this is a great book. So again, I don't think it's a bad book. It's just not something that I personally enjoyed a lot. So again, that's why I gave it a 2.5, but I think other people would enjoy this a lot. So that's why I gave it its rating, but I don't think this is a bad book. So that was the last book from March. So that was my March wrap up. Um, I appreciate everybody sitting through um, my March wrap up. Um, 
thank you so much for coming to the channel. If you like what you're seeing, please like and subscribe. If you've read any of these books, please comment below just like what you thought about them, what you liked, didn't like about them. Um, and if you have any book recommendations, I'm always looking for something to add to my TBR or my wish list, even though it's forever and ever, forever and ever long, and I will never be able to read them all, but that's okay. So again, thank you so much. I appreciate everybody sticking through all of this. Um, I will see you next week with the next video. Again, please, if you're enjoying the content, like and subscribe. Um, hope everybody has a great um, April, a great week, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.